All right, everyone, welcome back to the Coyote Radio Show and Podcast. Great guest today, Abe Partridge is with us. Uh, this guy does it all. I mean, he he's a podcaster, he does paintings, he, of course, writes music, uh, not just in one band, but in two bands. He's wrote a book here recently. Uh, he's all over the place. Currently touring, he's going to be at Duke's Indy uh, on the 21st, February 21st. That's a Wednesday night, so come on out to Duke's. They got the fried chicken back now, and uh, can't go wrong with them. Uh, but yeah, thrilled to have Abe on. We're going to talk about so much stuff, um, so hang tight for that. We do got to give it up to the sponsors, uh, which I've already mentioned. One, Duke's Indy. Check out their website, Duke in, dukesindy.com. Then Bard Distillery down there in Muhlenberg County, Kentucky, uh, makes some of the best bourbon around, and, uh, and I stand behind that for sure. We got some bottles here at the house. And, of course, you can get uh, the special Coyote Old Fashioned drink is available at Duke's Indy if you want to you wanna try some of their bourbon. So their website is thebarddistillery.com. Give, give them a look there and see what you can find. I'm sure there's something there for you if you like to dabble in the mixed drinks department. So, <laughs> But, uh, yeah, there's been a lot going on. Um, just want to say real quick, thanks to everyone that has been watching. It's been pretty wild this past year, year and a half. Uh, lots changed, and the, the channel's growing, so thank you. Uh, we're on all the platforms as far as uh, social media. You know, We're even on TikTok now, which is terrible, but we're there. Uh, I don't do a good job at it, but we're on TikTok. And Instagram, Facebook, that sort of thing. Of course, YouTube, if you're watching. And uh, you can listen in on all the streaming platforms. So we also do have the website, too, if you ever want to check that out. We got merch on there, all the past episodes and shows, and uh, any upcoming information is usually on there, which there's a big one coming up, I should probably mention. Um, we're throwing our very big, very first, uh, I wouldn't say very big, it's actually a very small and intimate festival in southern indiana it's called picking in the backwoods teamed up with duke's indy to make this event happen we got two days of music 20 bands it's everything's included on the ticket price um it's bring your own beer style free camping free parking like i said it's all included just we want everyone to come enjoy the music hang out and uh just have a good time this summer that's that's going to be august 16th and 17th so mark your calendars and we're going to announce the lineup on March 1st. So very soon, a couple weeks, we're going to announce the lineup. And then tickets will go on sale March 8th is the plan for all that. So keep that in mind. Um, we're building a website and all that good stuff for that actual event. So I'll be posting that on social media here soon. But I think that pretty much covers everything. Let's go talk to Abe and, and uh, yeah, just get his story and see where he's from and how he got wrapped up in this crazy industry. So, thanks for watching. All right, Abe Partridge is with us today. How's it going, man? I'm doing great, buddy. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's been a minute. I I think I saw you in December, so it's been a couple months. But yeah, uh, yeah, I've been wanting to get you on the show. Uh, it, it seems like probably the best question to ask you is: Is there something that you don't do? Because it seems like you do all kinds of awesome, interesting stuff. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, I just yeah, I just stay real busy, and uh, yeah, every every day. Every I tell people every day of my life I'm either making something or showing something, some showing something that I already made. So yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, let's kind of start at the beginning, man. If you would just kind of explain to people where you grew up, how you kind of got involved in the arts and the music, and your kind of kind of upbringing around that, and how you how you are today, basically. Yeah, well, it's a really long. That's a really long, long story. But uh, I grew up in uh, I grew up in South Alabama and uh, outside of Mobile, and uh, then I uh, went to I went to a 
Bible college when I was uh, 18 after I finished high school. And uh, I just kindly uh, started going on a, uh, went down a, uh, uh, went to four Bible colleges in four years. And about was, I was almost kicked out every one I was at, you know. <laughs> uh, then I met a girl at the third one, and I married her on the day after I graduated from the fourth one. And uh, then we start. I started preaching in Northwest Georgia at that time, and uh, did that for a few years, working minimum wage jobs and preaching, doing this manual labor stuff, and then uh, moved up to Kentucky. Well, in one of the Bible colleges I was at, I started playing banjo. I uh, bought a banjo when I was 18 years old. I started play, started playing banjo and uh, was playing in the church mostly. And uh, then when I was 25, I took a church up in Middlesbrough, Kentucky, and uh, which is right next to Cumberland Gap. And uh, I started pastoring there. And, and by that time, I'd started playing guitar, too, because uh, to lead songs in the church and everything. And. Now I started having a crisis, you know, a crisis of faith, and I just, um, I kind of had gotten out of the echo chamber that I was in for nine years or so, and uh, got off up there to Kentucky by myself, and didn't want to do, didn't want to do the preaching thing anymore, and so I started writing songs about it, and painting about it, and uh, then I moved back down to. Uh, mobile with my wife and my two children and then i joined the military and uh that was that was 15 years ago and uh i went to the desert in 2013 and by that time i had already been writing songs since like mid 2006 2007 something like that so uh when i was over there in the desert i uh i I had another kind of a crisis thing and it was like, man, I, I need to get home and, and play these songs. And so I came home in 20, uh, 2014. By the end of 2015, I started playing my music, playing my songs to, to listening to audiences. And um, then I started touring, you know, and, and, uh, and in 20, let's see, 2018, I had my first art show. And, uh, yeah, that's and then so you know, fast forward five or six years or something, here I am talking to you. So, yeah, yeah. The um, as far as the you mentioned art show in 2018, did any training background in that, or you just kind of went for it, no schooling or anything? Just yeah, man. I I, I had started so I started painting at the same time I started writing songs. Uh, I was. It was it was my attempt to make sense out of uh, what I felt at the time, and it was just kind of like um, it was really like kind of like therapy. Whenever as I was uh, attempting to make sense out of life, and of, and of, I mean, you know, I had spent uh, my entire young adulthood training in the ministry. And, uh, you know, I was 27 years old with a wife and two children, uh, fa facing the fact that if I were to leave the ministry, that it was going to be not only the death of so many uh, friendships and relationships that I had built over the years, but it was really going to be the, the uh, my, my education was rendered irrelevant. You know, it was going to be like the start and over. And uh, that was a that was a real hard bridge to cross, and so. Uh, but you know, I that during that time I started writing and painting, and I you know I never took a class or nothing on any of that. I don't. Uh, and you know, at this juncture in my life, I'm glad I didn't. But yeah, you know, I just just kind of did. I I did it. I did it for. I did it. I did it for myself, you know, and was, I never really planned on playing songs for other people or painting for other people. That was never really in the cars. Uh, I mean, it, I painted for 10 years before I had my first show, you know? Yeah. Oh, the reason I asked is because I went to 
an art school here in, in Indy for four years and you know saw all different types of art that you can think of and some of what you've been doing you mentioned it too and I I love their therapeutic type art like there's yeah. nights where me and my wife will just you know what let's break out all this paint and drawing we'll just sit here and draw something or it didn't even matter what it was it was just like turn off the tv for a minute let's just create something it's just so yeah. something therapeutic you know it's not like i sold it or anything it's in the closet you know it's like, but yeah. but i i love it uh so what 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 made you like um switch out of faith i mean there's something I don't know if that's the right term, but to go a different path, I guess that's something we don't really talk about on the podcast that much because it's it's a fairly touchy subject. You talk to so many different people about religion, and everyone has their own ideas and opinions about it. But yeah. I mean, it's really, obviously, with your work, there's really no way around the topic. <laughs> I mean, it has to be brought up, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, I ain't a preacher anymore. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't. I no longer feel the need to, to make uh, dogmatic statements on faith or anything like that anymore. But, uh, but I mean, I, I have. Uh, it, it was, it was something for me. You know, I mean, I've struggled with faith all of my life, really, and. Um, you know, for a long time there, I, I thought I, I thought I had about all the answers there was to have. And then as that collapsed, you know, uh, I kind of, I kind of grew weary of it, you know, where I was just kind of like, this is just, a, it was it's really a subject I didn't want to approach or anything. And I didn't really want to talk about it. didn't want to think about it. And, you know, in, in my time in the military, uh, you know, you don't have to talk about it. So uh, yeah. it was just kind of something I just let go. And then, you know, with the, with the, in the podcast, with my work in the podcast um, uh, and, and going to the serpent handling churches and all that, which we haven't mentioned yet, but most people are aware of it. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of led to a rediscovery, you know, kind of a reignition of 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 my own my own faith and and uh, and it's led me to a place of contentment and so it's not it's not a subject that I'm scared to talk about anymore but I definitely don't talk about it in the ways that I used to talk about it when I was an independent fundamental Baptist preacher yeah yeah I could that's uh I've I've always felt that way too as far as like uh, you mentioned just kind of struggling with faith and believing and all that. I think it's part of just part of the journey for sure. I mean, yeah. Uh, you mentioned the podcast, which I haven't brought up yet, which is very insightful to that world of snake handling. Um, yeah. I was always interested because I, I think I mentioned to you in the past, like I have relatives from that part of the country on my mom's side. And I always kind of wondered, you know, I mean, it just sounds crazy, you know, people holding snakes and churches and all that. And it was just like, man. And then when you hear the podcast you have out, Alabama Astronaut, uh, which, by the way, was so well done. Everyone that's listening right now should just go down that rabbit hole. It kind of put a new light on it for me. Um, I don't know understanding is something I would never take part in or anything, but uh, it was more for you the, about the musical journey behind it. And I love that approach because that, that some of the music in there, that's straight up rock and roll, man. Like, yeah, some of the best music you can get. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it's really a pure, it's, it's a very pure type of, uh, uh, upwardly instead of outwardly, uh, outwardly uh, projected. It's like an upward, pro upwardly projected rock and roll, which I don't think exists really anywhere. 
at least not in the form that it exists there. And yeah, I mean, I've been obsessed with that music now for four years. I, I was just at a church, uh, I think, uh, three weeks ago. I'm still actively um, involved in in that community and still recording and uh, with plans on uh, hopefully putting out a, a documentary record of this music uh, within, you know, the coming months, but possibly years uh i'm uh, I, i'm uh drowning in the and uh in recordings <laughs> and i'm i'm still i'm trying to figure out a, i'm trying to figure out the correct way because it's important to me that i don't just go in there and take a bunch of music and then release it and then uh and and me or somebody else profit on it i, I want to I want to, uh, I'm, I'm trying to navigate the ways to get this music in a form that people can appreciate it, but also in a form that benefits the community, uh, like, you know, financially and everything, because it is, it's theirs, you know, and uh, so I'm still navigating all of this, these things, but, uh, but yeah, I'm still actively involved in it, Alabama Astronaut Season 2. Well, you know, we have this podcast right now called Mark for Life, which is kind of an offshoot of, of Alabama Astronaut. It's coming out every Sunday right now. I think there's going to be something like 30 episodes. And uh, it's it's the life story of one of the uh, one of the one of the people in Alabama Astronaut season one by the name of Cody Coots. And um, and then Alabama Astronaut season two is 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 still being worked on as well. With ho hopefully, hopefully, and maybe this year, but likely next year, we'll have it ready for uh, you know, for everything. So, yeah, I'm so it's still a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine how many stacks of recordings you have to go through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've I've recorded. So many services now, hundreds, hundreds of, of services over the past four years and uh, with hundreds and hundreds of hours of recordings and some really uh, incredible uh, audio captures and different things that in, in there. And uh, yeah, you just... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, sometimes people come over to the house and I'll play some of the stuff for them and people are, people are, their minds will get blown, you know? And, <laughs> uh, yeah. I just, uh, I, I just gotta, I just gotta not die before this thing gets out. <laughs> Cause yeah. uh, my biggest fear is I'm, uh, you know, I die or something. And then all this stuff just sits there. Cause nobody would pop could possibly figure out what it is. That, <laughs> it's just so, it's just, uh, it's a five terabyte hard drive. Just oh, man. With it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. might have to like back that up and put it in a fire safe or something. I do. I've got I've got one uh back to back up and one that, you know, if it if yeah. I, I've thought about that, believe me. It would have been it would have been like four years of my life <laughs> if it if something happened to it. So yeah, I've got it backed up. Yeah. Well, what was so fascinating about that, too, um, is how much you, you know, you did a lot of research trying to figure out has some of these songs or even just like a particular verse from a song that was already known even out there and it's documented and it doesn't really like there's a lot of it that it didn't seem like there was any like real true documentation of this music yeah. that's been on for years yeah yeah that's true most of this music uh uh most of it is is previously i mean so so you might be able to find clips of it but it's it might it was like it was never the purpose of the documentation the documentation was primarily about like video and the act of serpent handling and so kind of, you know it was it was all like secondary if there was music there no one's ever really went in there to 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 record their songs and uh, that's what i've been doing you know and trying to professionally capture a lot of these uh a lot of these songs i mean if you want to see 
videos or pictures of people handling serpents. You can Google it, but uh, and you can find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of of videos and and pictures. I mean, the University of Tennessee Chattanooga has a whole archive online of of video recordings that that uh that my friend Dr. Ralph Hood made over the years. But um, this was. This is going to be, whenever I put this record out, it'll be the first record of its kind uh, and, and document their their music, yeah. Yeah. Any chance it will go to vinyl? Well, that would be the plan, yeah. So I would definitely, I'm right now we're trying to fit, you know, I, me and Farrell Gibbs is my partner in all this. Uh, he's, he's the guy that uh, created the podcast and uh and has all the technical expertise on the creation of podcasts and things and uh and he's a hell of a storyteller as well he uh he kind of just followed me as i was living my life and 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 made alabama astronaut but um yeah we're we're gonna definitely release it on vinyl and and probably there will there will be uh, some CDs, but yeah, there's, uh, we are, uh, we'd like to make like maybe a box set that kind of spans the, spans the entirety of, of what that music is and sounds like. So people can, um, you know, I mean, number one, it's good. Like, I think a lot of people would just like the music, but it also has value from a, from a historical and like an academic standpoint as well you know so we we want it to be thorough thoroughly documented and all that kind of thing in addition to just being a cool rock and roll record you know yeah now it's probably worth mentioning that the podcast name you also have a song called alabama <laughs> and they're not really technically yeah <laughs> the same topic at all <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Alabama astronaut was something that just got uh, it, it's it just gets thrown on a lot of stuff I do, which is fine. Um, but yeah, it's That's just a nickname, it, right? Basically, I, I I mean I guess it's I didn't ask for it, but I guess it's kind of become that way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That the song you wrote, uh, Alabama astronaut, is so well written and it's funny it's it's wild it's crazy it's it's all these different things combined into one it's uh and it's totally different when you like when i've seen you do it live an acoustic version versus the record and it's it's got its own feel when it's like that it's it's amazing really thank you buddy i appreciate that yeah I, you know love that record that i released uh we we had a lot of fun, you know. That 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 record was a definitely a studio album, you know, just kind of like trying different stuff out. But then when I'm playing it live, you know, it's just me with a guitar mostly, or me with a guitar and and, and uh, one or two or three band members, you know. And we're playing acoustic instruments, so we just make it make do with what what we can. Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. Thanks, brother. When people ask, like, what type of music, I tell, I just tell them you're a storyteller. I mean, you just are great at painting the picture. Like, if I have your record on it, and it just, like, it's like I'm there. I can visualize what you're talking about. And that's hard for artists to do. Well, thank you, bud. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I... I've always thought of myself as a communicator first and the entertainer second, you know. Yeah. Now, the record that you're talking about being released through the church, what would that, um, what would that be titled like? Would that be under your name, or would that have its own identity? Oh no, it won't be under my name. I will simply be uh, the producer. The of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, it's I'm not playing on it. No, it, it'll be uh, yeah, it'll be it'll be music that I captured, recorded at you know at the at the churches and stuff. Okay, are yeah. you on anything of your personal? 
What's that? Are you working on any of like your personal music? Oh yeah, man. I've got a bunch of new songs that I've written and, uh, and I've got some tried and true songs that have never really been properly released yet. And, uh, my man, my manager's trying to, uh, we're trying to work it out, but I'm trying to uh, hopefully get in the studio again to, to record, uh, my third record here before the end of the year. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, right now I'm just playing a lot of shows, you know, I'm going out and, uh, uh, 2023, I played more shows than I ever played in any, any year previous. And, uh, I mean, uh, I, I think it was almost 200 shows, so it was a lot. And uh, this year, I'm, I'm already started it off just playing a ton, you know, so. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I hope to get back in the studio soon. Yeah. Well, speaking of which, you'll you'll be in my neck of the woods on, let's see, what's the date on that? Let me look. Yeah, I don't have it right offhand. I think it's next Wednesday, the twenty first. Yeah, that sounds right. It was yeah. during the week. Yeah, Duke's Indy. Have you played there before? Yeah. Been in there? No, I just met. I just met the guy at the last show at the High Five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Patrick. And Patrick and uh, and his and his wife, I believe. Correct. No, she just works there. Her name's Amanda. Oh, Amanda. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh yeah, I met I met the two of them at my show at at at, uh, at the high five with Justin Wells and um well it just so happened I was doing this you know this uh broad tour that was going to take me from uh, I think I was going trying to go from Chicago to Philadelphia or something and we had several days there where I didn't have much going on and so they that was one of them that they that that we've kind of got got in there so i'm yeah i'm thrilled to come out there man i'm really looking forward to it yeah that's uh well they sponsor this podcast and that's kind of my home spot <laughs> so you'll, oh, like cool. it. you'll like it there uh good people i got great fried chicken <laughs> all right well, we'll come hungry yeah oh yeah for sure it's a it's a great place especially in a, a place like this is pretty special to have in the midwest definitely um yeah so yeah i'm looking forward to it yeah i love a, a good they they call it a honky tonk didn't they yeah yeah it's yeah. definitely honky tonk vibes and all that but they, they're they do have some other styles of music obviously that come through there yeah well so, i love a good honky tonk yeah yeah <laughs> they, they don't they don't play too much pop country so <laughs> oh that's good like it. <laughs> Everyone yeah. watch. I got I got Abe shirt on. I picked up at the Hi Fi show. Pop there country is for posers. It's another great <laughs> song. Hilarious song. Yeah, yeah. That shirt will get you in trouble in Nashville, buddy. <laughs> I don't think I, I don't think I've showed you this. I, I sell these posters called Zero Tolerance for Corn Dick Pop Country. <laughs> <laughs> I put them on T shirts. I have, to, I have to get I you. Love that. I love that. <laughs> Poor dick. <laughs> Some guy, I was uh, at work one day, and that guy brought up, I don't know, he's talking about he just didn't like the, some artist on the radio or something, and he just started referring to it as corn dick music. I just thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a, that's, I mean, that's a good for one. sure. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, you did you do everything. Uh podcast, music, art, this, that, and the other, but you also are in a punk band. Yeah. Psych peas. We gotta talk about the psych peas. Yeah, man, the psych peas. Uh, how did that how did that form? Well, um let's see. So I had my first I had my first songwriter show. Let's see. It would have been October 2015 was my first gig I ever played. And it was a song. It was a, called a songwriter shootout. Mm -hmm. And I ended up playing this thing. Like I couldn't even believe I got invited. It was like one of these 
competitions, which don't get me started on those, but it was perfect for me <laughs> at that time, you know, and uh, I ended up doing well in it. And, and it, and it, it got me to where I was like, man, I think, I, I think people would care if I sang my songs publicly. And so I went back home to Mobile and there was this little venue there in town that was, that catered to folk, you know, folk club. It was like a listening room. And I went there and I asked the guy that run it, I said, Hey, you know, I just, uh, played this songwriter contest. I, you know, I won the night that I played and, uh i would like to play a show here and he was like yeah and so back in those days i had some military buds and and uh i was like i had some punk song you know some punk punk music that i had written and recorded and, and wanted to wanted to record but i could you know wrote and so i had a, a buddy a couple of buddies and we played a we played so my very first show was a partridge opening for the site piece <laughs> and there was just a, and then and you know we really sucked ass i mean it was terrible <laughs> so, i think there was like 14 people there you know it was like my first show and uh but everybody really responded to my song song you know my solo stuff but not so much to the psych piece <laughs> and so <laughs> and so then I, the guy gave me like a monthly gig at this place it was a listening room so i started playing there on monthly gigs starting and i think it was december of 2015 i started playing these monthly gigs well i would do them as you know with the me and the and then i'd play with my rock my rock and roll band you know and uh and then i would do just solo stuff and there really wasn't much of a difference between the two and then um but then you know gradually my my solo stuff started uh, getting attention. And so I started traveling around, you know, and playing just by myself. Well, then I got uh, uh, the drummer quit, you know, he quit on us. I mean, it wasn't serious or anything. And, uh, and I was playing out. Well, then by that time I had, st let's see, I think it was in 2017, I got signed to this little record label called Skate Mountain. And uh, who also were the Red Clay Strays. We were both uh, the Red Clay Strays were on Skate Mountain. And I was on Skate Mountain. There was a couple of other groups on Skate Mountain. Well, you know, we all become we all become buds, you know, right. uh, me and all the Red Clay Strays. And uh, we, you know, that was back. We, we started. We basically were starting at the same time there in Mobile, Alabama, which is not a there's it's, it's, there's not like a real a really. There's more of one now, but back in those days, there wasn't really like this huge scene, you know. So we all knew each other, and we become buddies, and then we play music together and book a lot of shows together. And so I was like, "Hey, you know, you guys." I asked John and Andrew. It's like you guys want to, you know, the, the drummer quit. You want you want to play some punk rock, you know? And they're like, "Hell yeah!" <laughs> and then when, when when they joined, you know, shit got taken to a to a to a better it, the, the band actually started being pretty good <laughs> and, and uh and i had a i had a buddy of studs there was still a one military buddy of mine that was still there playing guitar well and then he finally he finally called it quits and it was he was he had moved up to birmingham and it was too much and um so then uh Drew Nix from the Strays was like, "Hey man, I want to be the guitar player." So now, <laughs> you know, now now it's just me with three of the Red Clay Strays, you know. And uh, I mean, me and John and Andrew have been, uh, I would, you know, they we've been together since 2017 as the Sight Peas, and then Drew joined about a year ago, or a year and a year, a little bit over a year ago. And uh, yeah, man, we have a we have a hell of a good time. And, you know, what's so funny is, you know, back back in like 2018, 2019, something like like that, like we would book shows in Mobile and it and it would be billed like it would be billed like Abe Partridge, uh, the Sight Peas, the Red Clay Strays. That was the bill, right? And and like now, if you had that bill in Mobile, and if you just had red clay strays in Mobile, that's like that's like twenty five hundred tickets, you know. But yeah. like 
just like five or six years ago, man, it was like we'd be we'd be happy if there were seventy five people there, you know. Yeah. And, uh, they're 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 going they're they're going straight to the top, dude. I'm I'm so proud of them, and um, yeah. You know, we we but we still we still do psych P shows, you know, two or three times a year, uh, as often as we can. Really, like. We do them in Mobile if we're both home, which I'm hardly ever home. They're hardly ever home now. Or like the Laurel Cove, where they're on the bill and and I'm on the bill, and they and, and we just we just kind of do it then, you know. Yeah. So I yeah. uh I walked into that last year. I was at Laurel Cove, and that you guys did the late night set. <laughs> yeah. And I. I just remember hearing something through the woods. I'm like, somebody's getting down up there. I got to go see what's going on. And I went up there. It's like, it was wild. And I was like, it was a whole different vibe from what the rest of the weekend is, you know, Americana, full, you know. Yeah. I, I was digging it. Cause... <laughs> yeah. Thank you, man. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's really. So, you know, at this point, it's just kind of like a side, it's a side project for yeah. for all of us, really. I mean, they're, they're, they've obviously got their main thing and then they love it. And I've got my main thing and I love it. And, uh, but it's, it's really fun. I mean, you know, we'll put together shows in Mobile and, you know, we'll sell about 200 tickets and we'll go to the real shitty, you know, rock punk, punk club downtown, you know, and, <laughs> and we're, there's like puke stains all over the floor and everything. And, and we'll and we'll just go in there and uh we'll Keep go around it. And, yeah. <laughs> we'll go and what's so funny is you know they have to law they have to load their own shit into the gig. So, <laughs> <laughs> you, know, back. We, we, uh, you know, I I I load my own stuff. Or, you know, when you play a psych P show, I'm like, hey man, you gotta load your drums in there and you know just and uh and I, you know, they're at the point now where they got folks loading their shit. They're like, "Oh my god, man! I can't believe it. I remember how this goes." But like, yeah, get your shit in the gig, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're my buddies, man. I'm real, I'm real proud of them. I think they're the best. I think they're the best. Uh, uh, I think they're the best country rock act in in the whole world and i and i think they've they they're the best that has been going a long time and i don't even think they've scratched the surface of of what they're going to do artistically over the next few years man it's i've heard their new record too and it's, it's gonna freaking melt faces dude <laughs> that's yeah. great yeah I, they're definitely i think the hottest act in the game right now for sure and and yeah i think they can even be bigger for sure so. Yeah, yeah. Well, they have, yeah, they they have that, they have that thing, man. They have that thing that um, that elusive thing that that can that can that can really be uh, have a mass appeal, you know. And I mean, it already has, and it, but I think it's going to continue to grow. But man, they dude, they put in the hard work, brother. Yeah, you know. I've seen them for years, man. They've been, they were, li they all lived in the same little house out there in West Mobile for a while. Uh, you know, riding around in a bus, you know, I mean, they, they've paid their dues, but. Yeah. That's great to see, see it. Yeah, it, is. it is. The, um, what did, what exactly do you think? I mean, I don't know. I did. Who who's your biggest influence? Would you say, like, music wise? Who you? What'd you grow up on music? Um, certain bands, artists that you that you were always gravitated to, or? Yeah, I mean, uh, the probably the first the first record that I ever really connected with was uh was never mine by nirvana you know that was that i mean of course i'm I'm of the age where uh when that uh you know that was like a whole generation of of, of the folks that kind of that was the first music they ever really loved but then uh you know i just grew up listening to you know that that kind of stuff and then uh whenever i was preaching up in kentucky it co you know my my 
my collapse as it was uh, kind of coincided with the advent of high-speed internet into Middlesbrough, Kentucky, where I, I discovered a website called YouTube. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was trying to pick banjo back in those days. Yeah. And so uh, I was I was really, really concerned about, I really love banjo picking and different banjo styles, old-time banjo styles. And so I was looking up banjo pickers, and as I was doing that, uh, I came upon a video of the Newport Folk Festival from like, I think it was 65 or something. And while I was trying to figure out banjo stuff on the Newport Folk Festival video, I saw Bob Dylan. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'd never really heard, I'd heard of Bob Dylan, but I never heard that music, never really listened to it. And man, it, it hit me at the time in my life where that, it it like, it, it it connected with me so deeply it was the kind of it was the kind of stuff that i had it was it was almost like hearing nirvana for the first time again you know it was like this it was it was discovering this new kind of art that was so exciting and and it really like i felt it in a way that i hadn't felt anything in a long, long time and then so i just kind of went went down the rabbit trail of like bob dylan and towns van then i found towns van zandt then i found uh, john prine yeah and and all that well that's so then i just immersed myself into that stuff you know and um and then that shows in your music well that's that's really yeah that's what it is man i mean i i was like okay i've got to you know this just the words man it was something about like the way like Bob Dylan, John Prine, Towns Van Zandt, Guy Clark, you know, the, the way that they could, the way that they could take words and put them together in a, in a, in a, they could string them together in a way that, that you felt. It was like, man, it just, it ignited something in me that I, I've not been able to put out ever since. Yeah. Do you recall which, uh, Bob Dylan record or just that live performance that you're talking about? Oh, well, the, well, well, the live performance that I saw was a song called Blow. The first Bob Dylan song I ever really listened to was called Blowing in the Wind. Yeah. How many, how many roads must a man walk down before you can call him a man? And it was just like these, uh, you know, these, he said, he said things that were deeper than you could eat. He said he said things that would have, you know, it would take it would take most people an essay to try to communicate. And just like in this one little like how many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? It was just so it was so freaking powerful to me at that time. And uh, I just become I become obsessed with words and 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 melodies and then like tying them together to make these. You know, these powerful statements and. um yeah so that, that was it yeah 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 he, i mean he's obviously i mean most people would say they're he's top five in their music writing list i guess you could say or number one for sure yeah something yeah, and you the, know, and the then, phrasing yeah. the phrasing of his stuff really like you said, it kind of strings it together. I don't know. It, it hits differently because of the way it's pronounced and worded. It, yeah, and he had a lot of different it. eras. You know, he had so many different eras in his whole career. I mean, he's still doing it today. But like that early stuff, you know, that I saw on that on that Newport uh, Folk Festival video was like it blew my mind. And. uh and then, you know, just Googling like songwriters, you know, and it was like, oh, and the next thing you come across is Towns Van Zandt, I start playing that. And I remember hearing Waiting Around to Die for the first time. And, oh my uh, gosh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I heard that the first time when, when I was like mid-2000s. I heard it for the first time in my life. And uh, and at that time in my life, like that, that is what I felt like half the time. And uh I was I was in a I was in a very dark place in my life. And when you heard that, it was almost like, okay, I'm not suffering alone. Yeah. You know? And it's and late. so yeah, you know, people shit on like sad songs a lot, but you shouldn't. No, I love it. You know, 
you know, you, you, people shouldn't, man, because, um, because when I needed those, man, that there's sometimes you need those. And when you need them, it, you need them, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I listen to probably more sad stuff than <laughs> anything. Hell yeah. <laughs> my it's like, it's like my wife's like, like, can you put on something else and at work <laughs> to get the mood going here? I'm like, all right, yeah, we're at work. Let's try and get the pace going in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, yeah, and most of the stuff I listen to, they're already most of them are dead and gone too. Like I listen to a lot of old stuff. Uh, another writer that pops out, you were mentioning some of those other writers. Yeah, uh, Bla- Blaze Foley. You like him? Oh yeah, of course, man. Yeah, Blaze. Yeah, I love his. Uh, I love his stuff. Yeah, he, oh, amazing. Yeah. That just popped in my mind because I know some friends actually visited his grave today and posted pictures online. It's like, oh man, it's pretty cool. Oh, but, dope. Is he a, is he buried in Texas or Georgia? Or I think he's in Texas. Okay. You know, he spent some time in Georgia too, but I, I didn't know if he I didn't know where he was buried at. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what else am I missing, Abe? I'm just I'm sure you got a million other things. What <laughs> But, but buddy, I, I, you know, it's hard for me to uh, even keep track of all I've got going on. I, I keep so many irons in the fire, you know. I mean, yeah. As we as we speak, uh, I mean, as we speak, I'm on the, I'm on day like five of like a twenty something day run around. I mean, I'm go. I went from Mobile to Texas to I'm going to Minnesota to Philadelphia down to. Aruba and the Dominican Republic and then coming back home. So it's like I'm just in the middle of that. Um I I'm painting all the time. Uh, you know, I've got an art show currently. Uh I got an art exhibition at this place called Young Harris College. It's a liberal arts college in Georgia. That's been going on for several weeks now. Um I just put out a book uh a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, there's a documentary um, currently that we're working on about uh, my grandfather's canteen that he carried through World War II and a song I wrote about it and uh, went over to Europe and did a whole bunch of recording. That should be coming out hopefully in a few months. Um, I don't know, man. Just And then all the servant handling stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Now you did send me the there's a, a rattlesnake that you sent that was used yeah. in the services that had passed and uh, yes. most people that listen to the show have probably heard me say but I do taxidermy work for the people that don't know. Uh, I was just researching on probably the best way we can get that preserved so you can have a guitar strap with it. Oh, I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I had this. I had so I've 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 had this dream of 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 making my own, of having my my own guitar strap made from a from a from one of the rattlers that were handled, excuse me, in in some of the services that I've been in, and the rattlers are a little you know big rattlers that are big enough for a guitar strap. Uh, they're really they're they're fairly hard to come by, you know, and uh, when and when you and then they don't just die all the time, you know. The church the people at church try to keep them alive as long as they possibly can, you know. So they treat them really well. So it's a rarity when one dies, and there was a there was a beautiful uh, yellow timber rattler that died that I got called uh, that that was called the name of the rattler was old lemonhead, and uh, I had gotten the rattles off of it, and uh, I got the skin or the hide or whatever you call it. And, uh, and it was, uh, it ended up being stolen by, by a guy out of Mississippi. I, I had, I had was recommended to, to use this guy. And he ended up being really shady and, uh, he stole the skin from me. Oh my gosh, man. What? And then so, so this happened in like 2021. I'm not going to steal your, your snake skin, just so you know. 
Oh, I, if I believed that you would, I would have never given it to you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was like this guy, I mean, he came over. He was a veteran of the drug war, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, spent a lot of time in prison. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in prison, he learned how to do a lot of leather work and stuff like that. And so I thought he would be the one to do it. And he came over to my house, got it. And then he stopped answering my calls, written, returned my texts and uh, returned my Facebook messages. And I tried to call him out publicly and and uh, <laughs> it didn't work. So I was like, whatever, man, it's just a hide. But uh, I've been waiting for another one. And then, uh, well, finally, when there another one died. So now you have it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it has to be one. I mean, there's several guitar snake straps out there or whatever but it has to be one that was used in the service for you it's, yeah. it's just too fitting you can't have one with that it has to be used you know, I, yeah i don't i don't want just any rattler i want yeah i want one from the church yeah yeah you got any you got any boots snakeskin boots <laughs> no i don't i don't but i would like some yeah i don't wear a lot of cowboy boots but i i, I do have two pair actually i got them right here Oh, cool. Got some snakes there. Oh, yeah, that's a diamond bag, bud. Yeah. That's now a I like, diamond bag. And I like alligators. I got some gators. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. But other than that, it's usually just a work boot. Those are for fancy, fancy occasions. I'll wear snakeskin boots probably to your show. <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. I know where there. I know where there's a diamond back right now. It's about seven foot long. Really? Yeah. And if he ever dies, I'm gonna do my best to get it. Get it. Oh, in the wild, or is it at a church? At a church. It's seven foot. My. It's seven. It's every bit of seven foot. And whenever I, whenever I see you, whenever I see you, uh, here in a here in a few days, I'll I'll show you a video. It'll blow your mind, but. Oh my it's god. Massive. It's about it's it's about like that big around it. <laughs> it. It's hands about as big as a like a big as a fist or something. It's really it's it's insane. That must be feeding <laughs> it house cats or something. <laughs> he, that thing eats a rat. It, they they grow the mice right next to his cage. Oh so man, the, the mice are just looking over at what's going to eat them. You know. <laughs> Well, luckily for them, I don't think they're that smart to realize what's going to happen. So they're probably <laughs> not stressing it. They're just living. <laughs> yeah, doing their thing. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate you being on. This has been great chatting, catching up. Uh, yeah, brother. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll be in touch. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at a handful of shows this summer, I'm sure. Anytime you're in the area or at a festival like Laurel Cove, which is going to be crazy, that's sold out. Oh, yeah, I'm looking real forward to that. There's also some cool stuff uh, that hadn't even been announced yet that uh, that's that's uh, that I'm going to have a little party in, uh, that's going to it's going to be part of the festival this year. So I don't I don't want to talk about it right now, but uh, <laughs> I might not supposed to be. I don't know. Maybe I'm supposed to. I'm not sure. I got to talk contract. About it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Like I said, and uh, I'll see you soon. All and right, it, Justin. Yeah. See, see you in a few days, buddy. Is there any anything you want to mention to anyone before you jump off here as far as uh, where they can find all your stuff? Obviously, social media. Uh, you got a website or. Yeah, apartridge.com is where I've got everything. Uh, my podcast can be found at alabamaastronaut.com. And then, you know, I'm active on, on Inst Facebook, Instagram. And then uh, I got all the other shit, too, but I don't <laughs> I don't go on there to look at it. But the other people help me with my wife and some of my family <laughs> help. Me, so. Yeah, I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 